Hello, biology students. So last time we briefly talked about active and passive transport. Now we're going to talk about them more in depth. Let's get started. So we saw this exact same slide in the previous set of notes. So I'm going to look at it quickly. You're welcome to pause and rewrite it. But what I wanted to highlight was the major stuff in it. So there are two types of transport, passive and active. Passive does not require energy. We know the major energy currency in the cell is ATP. Passive transport goes from high to low concentration. Think of this like going down a playground slide. Our examples are osmosis, diffusion, and facilitated diffusion. So here we have the picture. More concentration of molecules. They're going from high to a lower concentration of molecules down here. We can see the direction of movement using an arrow. And today we're going to be comparing this more in depth with types of active transport. This active type does require energy. Think activity, energy. But this is going in the opposite direction from low to high. Think about this as somehow being able to go up a playground slide. If you were to go up a playground slide, that would take energy or ATP. Let's learn some exact specific types of active transport now that we know the differences and that we've learned and heard of the types of a passive transport. So all of these types are going to go against the concentration gradient, meaning that they're going to require ATP because it's going the opposite direction. Think about it going up the slide from low to high. The first type that's going from low concentration to high concentration is protein gated channels. We've seen protein channels that can facilitate the regular diffusion. This type is going to go the opposite direction. Okay, So we're seeing these green circles. They're going to clamp into this gate. They had an ATP that became an ADP, and then we have those green molecules go over here where there was already a ton of them. Now we're seeing this orange go the opposite direction from a low concentration to now where there's a high concentration. So both things ended up going to where there was a higher concentration already. But what did it require the use of? This blue thing, which is ATP. So all it is is the channel protein is helping but it's a protein gate because it is going the opposite direction. So we don't call it a normal protein channel. We call it a protein gate channel because it required ATP to open the gate. The ATP kind of is acting like a lock or a key, right, that allows these things to go in this odd, weird direction that's abnormal from low to high instead of the other way from high to low. So that's our first type. Our second type is this weird word. Say it, endocytosis endocytosis. This type is how large particles can enter cell. Notice that the word enter starts with the same letters as the word endo. Endo, enter. So what does this mean? This is how especially single-celled creatures like amoeba that are protists, they eat things this way. So as this single-celled creature eats this little black little creature that's darker colored here, um, it'll actually engulf it or swallow it by putting its kind of body around it until it eats it, which is kind of crazy. So as this food particle enters, we call that endo, endo enter. The last example is how large particles exit the cell, exo exit. So we call this exocytosis. So here is usually how we get rid of waste particles. So a bunch of waste particles have been digested maybe by the lysosome, maybe the cell doesn't need them anymore, and it'll put them in this circular package, and that package will be sent off to the cell membrane where it'll merge with the cell membrane and those particles will be able to exit. So this was a short set of notes. Good job guys, that was it.